Bonjour à tous. Whether it's to cover the bills, to keep people on the payroll, or to make rent on a storefront, many Canadians need a hand right now. So over the past few months, we've brought in new programs that are doing exactly that. Just take the wage subsidy and what it has meant for people like the employees at Euroline in Oakville. This family-owned appliance business had to close their operations and lay off staff because of the pandemic. It was a really tough spring. But when they applied for the wage subsidy, they were able to then retire, rehire their entire team. And that matters to the 22 people who now have their paycheck again. To all employers, please use the wage subsidy if you haven't already. This help is designed for you and your employees. And if you need more support, apply for the Canada Emergency Business Account. On the SIBA in particular, I want to remind everyone that we recently expanded the eligibility for this program to include even more small businesses, like farmers. The new application process will open on Friday, and in the coming days, we'll have more information to share about it. For now, though, you can go to edc.ca for information about the documents you'll need to apply. In the last few weeks, things have started to look up for a lot of people. But that said, we also know that far too many Canadians are still struggling. If you're having troubles finding a job, you shouldn't also be worrying about whether you'll hit the limit of your CERB benefits. So right now, we're working on a solution to extend the benefit for people who can't return to work yet. We'll have more details later this week, but for today, I want you to know that we will continue to be there for you and your family. Au cours des dernières semaines, les choses ont commencé à s'améliorer pour bien des gens. Cela dit, on sait aussi que beaucoup trop de Canadiens éprouvent encore des difficultés en ce moment. Si vous avez du mal à trouver un emploi, vous ne devriez pas non plus avoir à vous inquiéter de ne plus toucher la prestation canadienne d'urgence. On est en train de trouver une solution pour prolonger la période de prestation pour ceux qui ne peuvent toujours pas retourner au travail à cause de la pandémie. On aura plus de détails pour vous cette semaine, mais pour l'instant, je veux que vous sachiez qu'on va continuer d'être là pour vous et pour votre famille. À ce sujet, je veux aussi prendre un moment pour reconnaître tous les fonctionnaires qui travaillent fort depuis des semaines pour s'assurer que les Canadiens reçoivent la prestation d'urgence et la subvention salariale d'urgence. En cette semaine nationale de la fonction publique, je tiens à les remercier pour tout ce qu'ils font pour nous, surtout pendant la pandémie. During National Public Service Week, I want to thank all the women and men who work incredibly hard to get Canadians the help they need. Especially recently, they've done a remarkable job for their fellow Canadians. No one could have predicted that this spring would turn out the way that it did. Certainly for farmers, who keep our grocery stores stocked and our families fed, it's been an unexpectedly challenging few months. With restaurants and hotels closed for weeks, many producers were left with extra food they couldn't sell. Farmers work hard to raise their livestock and grow their crops. They shouldn't be in a position where they have to see that wasted. And that's why today we are opening applications for the Surplus Food Rescue Program. This program will help get products that farmers and fishers can't sell, whether that's potato, poultry, or seafood, or otherwise, to communities that need it. People across the country will benefit, including in remote northern communities. This is a win-win. Farmers will have people to buy their goods, and food will get to the plates of families who wouldn't have enough otherwise. Aujourd'hui, on lance les applications pour le programme d'achat des aliments excédentaires. À cause de la pandémie, de nombreux producteurs n'arrivent pas à vendre une partie de leurs produits. Ils ont travaillé fort pour les cultiver et ce serait dommage de les gaspiller. Avec ce programme, on va acheter certains des excédents pour les redistribuer à ceux qui en ont besoin. Tout le monde est gagnant. Les agriculteurs ont un marché pour leurs produits et on aide à nourrir les familles qui en ont besoin. In many ways, COVID-19 is a challenge like we've never dealt with before. But it certainly isn't the only test we're facing. In an increasingly complex and interconnected world, we need to think outside the box in order to keep people safe, to grow our economy, and to shape our future for the better. 
artificial intelligence has the potential to be an incredibly powerful force for good, but it must be used responsibly and ethically. And on that front, Canada is continuing to lead the way forward. Today, as one of 13 founding members, Canada helped launch the Global Partnership on Artificial Intelligence. As part of this initiative, we've also worked with the Government of, of Quebec to set up a centre of expertise in Montreal, which will be one of the partnership's two global hubs. This country is home to some of the world's most innovative people, not to mention the fact that Canadians have pioneered much of today's AI tech. It only makes sense to put that expertise to use. Aujourd'hui, le Canada participe au lancement du Partenariat mondial sur l'intelligence artificielle en tant que l'un des 13 membres fondateurs. Dans le cadre de cette initiative, on a également travaillé avec le gouvernement du Québec pour mettre en place à Montréal l'un des deux centres d'expertise du partenariat. Les Canadiens figurent parmi les personnes les plus innovatrices au monde et sont les pionniers de nombreuses technologies dans le domaine de l'intelligence artificielle. On va donc mettre ce, cette expertise à profit. Earlier this morning, I also joined Minister Ng and her counterparts in the Ottawa Group on World Trade Organization reform. We discussed our work together on trade, on safeguarding international supply chains, and on building a global economy that works for everyone. Now, more than ever, it is vital that we collaborate across borders to keep our economy strong and our citizens safe. This pandemic is a global crisis, and it requires global solutions. So in response to a request from the United Nations, I can also announce that Canada will provide airlift support for urgently needed medical and humanitarian supplies. Through this mission, we will be delivering help to some of the world's most vulnerable people. Ce matin, j'aimerais aussi souligner qu'aujourd'hui, c'est la journée mondiale de la lutte contre la maltraitance des personnes âgées. Nos parents, nos grands-parents et nos aînés ont bâti notre pays. On doit les protéger et s'assurer qu'elles reçoivent les soins qu'elles méritent. Que vous décidiez d'appeler vos grands-parents ou de prendre des nouvelles de votre voisin, on peut tous faire notre part. Dans ma circonscription de Papineau, la table de concertation AMI fait un travail incroyable pour prévenir la maltraitance des personnes âgées tout au long de l'année. Je veux d'ailleurs en profiter pour reconnaître et remercier tous ceux et celles qui travaillent au sein d'organismes semblables à l'échelle du pays. Merci de prendre soin de nos aînés. Aujourd'hui et à chaque jour, on doit travailler ensemble pour assurer la santé et la sécurité des Canadiens de tous âges. Our parents, our grandparents and our elders built this country. And we all have a part to play in keeping them safe. On that note, let me give a sh big shout out to the Rogers Foundation for their $60 million donation to help the most vulnerable during this pandemic. I know this initiative, this incredible initiative will have a huge impact on a whole lot of people's lives. And speaking of people who make a difference, I want to end this morning by recognizing the Canadian troops who arrived in Ukraine yesterday to resume their training mission. The work they're doing, together with our partners, to build a more secure country is incredibly important. I know all Canadians will be thinking of these brave women and men in uniform as they serve overseas. Merci beaucoup.